Welcome to this unit seven on set theory and logic, the foundations of mathematics. Very exciting topic. It was for me always uh, a very exciting thing. Also in college, a teacher of mine, uh, Ernst Specker, once uh, gave a course on model theory and I, I won a book, which I, ha I have his signature here. So for the preparation of this of this uh, lecture, I tried to make a list of the top 10 results in uh, logic or set theory. Definitely the most important one is Gödel's incompleteness theorem. It's very accessible. Also, uh, I have uh, put it on the top because I was also already as a, as a high school student, I could read about it like in Gödel Escherbach from Hofstadter's book. And uh, it was everywhere. It was in the newspapers like this, uh, Swiss newspapers, NZZ, has often uh, uh, had articles about this. This theorem shatters the dream of uh, Hilbert of building a foundation of mathematics and which covers everything. So there's always, if you have a strong enough system like the piano uh, system, axiom system, uh, which we usually take for granted, then there are always results which we cannot really uh, prove. So there's either we can take uh, its, its truth as uh, true or, or false, and both are consistent with the original theory. And uh, uh, one of the kind of, I put the tenth part, axiom of choice is one of these uh, results, which is independent, but also with the axiom of choice or without axiom of choice, you have again a choice to, 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 to extend mathematics. So it's, it's extremely exciting also that we cannot, in a system which is strong enough, we can prove the consistency of the system within that system. So we have to go out of this system. So we never know, for example, whether our foundational system, which we usually take for granted, the semino franco axiom system, whether this is consistent. It could die tomorrow. There are many alternatives and we have a very, very rich mathematical structure also in the foundation. So there are lots of alternatives. Mathematicians are still working on, 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 on this. So that's number one, a very exciting result. Also, uh, Gödel is a, uh, one of these figures, you know, because of his connection with Einstein, who really was, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, an icon. And uh, uh, Specker, who uh, uh, gave this logic, was he said once that uh, that other mathematicians like Paul Bern Berner, who he knew, uh, was actually thinking that this this is this is true. He was thinking even before, so probably quite a few mathematicians thought this is. This is this is this is the case, but also thought that this is not provable. That's so difficult, and 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 uh, Gödel really succeeded with uh, proving this. It's a very interesting story, also. Uh, you know that uh, at that time when Gödel announced that result, uh, 1931, uh, then uh, uh, others like Zermelo were very very upset, and so Zermelo even gave a talk just after after Gödel at that conference. So it's, it's, it, this story has been told by Olga Tauski Todd, who I know from, from Caltech. And then the next thing is, is also very exciting. It's something you can uh, also understand very early on that there are, there are different infinities. So there are infinities of the uh, integers, so you can count them one, two, three, four, five. And then there's the infinity of the interval, or the in infinity of our space. And these are different infinities. So it's definitely fine to think about infinity, and it's a very beautiful argument, this diagonal argument. Maybe I'll just make a few notes here. You can actually prove that for any set, 2 to the x has a larger cardinality than x itself. So all the, the power set, the, the set of all subsets has more uh, sets in it than, than, uh, than the set itself. The third result is kind of something which Cantor assumed to be true, but he, he, he only proved it later and it's now called the Cantor Schroeder Bernstein theorem. It's actually very exciting because the notion of cardinality, that's what Cantor's big idea was. See a set X has smaller is less cardinality than a set Y if there is an inductive function from X to Y. So let me just say maybe this is X and this is Y. So if you can assign to every point x, you can assign a point here in y, and you never have this possibility that you have a collision. You have not, this is not allowed. So this is called injective. Different points are mapped into different points here. And if you have that, and you have also a, a, a reverse, if you have this, then, uh, then, then they have the same cardinality. See, so this is the Hilbert Hotel. <laughs> So you'd think that uh, the numbers two, four, six, the even numbers, these are the even numbers, 
you think that the even numbers, there are less even numbers than, than, than entire, uh, than all the integers, because it's half of it. But you can find a bijection between these two things. You can map n to 2n in a one-to-one -one way. And so they have the same cardinality, even so it looks less. And then uh, more, more surprising is the, uh, that you also can count like the, the rational numbers we come to this. A very exciting theorem is uh, the Zamelo theorem, which says a well-ordering theorem, which says that every uh, set can be well-ordered. So that every subset at the least has a, has a least element. But an explicit ordering, even for the reals, is not uh, known in, in, in that way. This is, this is equivalent to the axiom of choice. And uh, uh, axiom of choice is, uh, comes also back uh, here in, uh, in, in number 10. So this axiom of choice is something we choose to actually accept and that it has consequences like the banach tarski paradox. I will, I will come, come to this uh, uh, just in a second. The next thing is very, very uh, important. So we can form uh, addition of sets. <clears throat> so we can form an addition of sets. So this is the addition of these two sets here. So this is, this is uh, x plus y. <clears throat> it's the symmetric difference. It, uh, and the empty set is the zero, the zero element. <clears throat> and then there is also an intersect. The intersection is, uh, when you take the intersection, this is the multiplication. So we have a, a additional multiplication, like with the numbers, and what Poole realized is this is an algebra, like the algebra of numbers, and it has been reinvented again and again, like in uh, computer science, uh, Claude Shannon has actually, his first paper, important paper as a student, was, was about this Boolean algebra. It's very, very important uh, in, uh, in computer science and information theory. <clears throat> So that's, it's also the, the foundation of logic, right? True or false. And uh, so that's bull. <clears throat> uh, the next thing is uh, at the law of thought. So that's kind of the tertium non dato, for example. <clears throat> and it's very old, Aristotle already, you know, either something is true or something is false, right? But somehow it, uh, if there is a catch to it, we have things which we, uh, <laughs> can choose whether it's true or false. It's very exciting here. We are really in a very, very exciting area of, uh, of, of also philosophy. And uh, so Aristotle was also a philosopher. And things like this, that if A implies B, then B need not be implies not A. So this is not. So you cannot reverse that. It often thinks this, this is done wrong also by politicians. If A implies B, it's not that true that B implies A. If it rains and the street is wet, but if the street is wet, it's not necessarily uh, raining, right? You could have watered it with, with, a, with a hose. <clears throat> so that's an example of Specker. Now, uh, uh, sets as a universal construct, that's very exciting also that we can, for example, say, if I have a function from x to y, we can represent it as a graph. This is x and y, and then we, we represent it as a graph, right? So we have, we have represented this function again as a set. So we have topologies, we have sigma algebras, we have, we have uh, orderings, we have a lot of constructs. Right? We have topological, we have order, we have measure theoretical. <coughs> so these, all these things which we have, all these uh, sheaves, <coughs> Whatever we define, we can do with, uh, with, with set theory. Similarly, also with category theory, we come to this. Uh, so there are other alternative frameworks which also work. But it's kind of a, from pop culture point of view, it's the new math uh, thing that uh, uh, we have put the language of sets already very early in education also. I was exposed to this in primary school very early on, and I found it very accessible. So sets, you see, if you take sets, and so you make, uh, you, you make uh, uh, for example, the union of sets, this Venn, di Venn diagram thing, so this Venn diagram, <coughs> this is something which is very accessible, even more than fractions, which comes usually later. Russell's paradox. 
So that's, uh, uh, that's very important because this is a foundational crisis, led to a crisis in mathematics. So uh, can you really, if you, have, uh, if you have set theory as a universal language, now you can define the set of all sets that are not, not members of, uh, of, of themselves. And uh, you ask yourself, is this a set? So if this is a set, then uh, it's not a set. And if it's not a set, then it's a set. So this is one of these paradoxes, I like the liar's paradox, I lie, or the paradox, which actually is at the foundation of Gödel, this theorem <coughs> cannot be proven. <coughs> which Gödel managed to formulate within the structure of mathematics. So, you know, you, you formulate what is a theorem, what is a, what is, what is a proof, and, uh, and you make this, formalize this, and then you use Gödel numbering, <coughs> numbering. So it's this recursive, this recursive uh, idea, which is very well described in this Gödel Escher Bach, and it's in music, it's in, it's in art, Escher and uh, Bach, both were very fond of this, uh, of this uh, 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 recursive theme. <clears throat> so that's the Russell paradox. Now the Cantor pairing is an exciting thing that uh, you would think that if you look at the fractions P over Q, right, the P over Q, the fractions P over Q, they are actually dense in the interval. So every number can be approximated by, uh, by fractions. And it's a little bit surprising that you can count them. And finally, let's look at the uh, Cohen theorem. So axiom of choice, that's one of the things. You can also say continuum hypothesis. So the co continuum hypothesis is very exciting. The continuum hypothesis tell tells that Aleph zero uh, between Aleph 0 and Aleph uh, 1, which is 2 to the Aleph 0. So this cardinality, this is the cardinality of the integers, and this is the cardinality of the reals. So whether there are, is a cardinality between that, is there a cardinality between that? And Cohen, uh, Cohen and uh, showed in the, in the 60s that it's, it's, it's independent. <clears throat> so it's one of these examples which, which Gödel kind of in his, in his incompleteness theorem tells what you can, you can never really have a complete system. But it's surprising that also this continuum uh, hypothesis is independent and the axiom of choice also. By the way, the axiom of choice is not very intuitive because what you can prove is uh, you, can take, you can take a sphere like this and you can cut it into, f into five a five piece. So maybe I, I, I take one piece, I take another piece, and I take a third piece, and a fourth piece, and a fifth piece. I can cut it into five pieces. This ball I can cut into five pieces. I can cut it and, and reassemble it using translations and rotations only and produce two spheres of the same size. So this is the, this is the uh, Banach-Tarski Banach paradox. It's counterintuitive because we, we believe, you know, if you have a, you cannot make out of one ball, two balls, but you can make that and uh, it uses the axiom of choice. And this shows also there are sets which you cannot measure. You cannot assign a, a volume to, this, uh, to these sets because the volume gets doubled. So that's very exciting and uh, uh, it's in, 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 the, in the pop culture. There are books about that, novels about, uh, 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 which have this banach -Tarski paradox as a theme. Cool, that's it for today. <clears throat>